I'm going to show you how to rebuild a unidose chlorine pump. This is the model U141-281. Any pump ending in 281 can be rebuilt with the SP281 parts kit. If the model number includes the letters TU or TT, you need a different set of parts. First thing is disconnect the discharge tube from the top of the pump. Notice the metal ring, keep that. Next, remove the tube adapter. Just unscrews like that. Remove the univalve, which is a rubber check valve. This one has some calcium buildup on it. It's not terrible, but it should be replaced. Next, remove the suction hose from the bottom side of the pump head. Don't lose the metal ring. Remove the tube adapter from the bottom of the pump cylinder head. There's another univalve in there. If it's really bad, like it's distorted or stuck open, it's been bad for a while. Sometimes you have to use needle nose pliers to reach up and pull it out. Being as we're making this a film, it's easy. Remove the cylinder head by removing these four screws. Don't lose the screws. These are not something you can find in a hardware store. They're stainless steel and a special thread. Take the screws out. Yep, I know. Here's a problem. The crack right there will make this pump not hold a prime. You'll need to replace the head if you see this crack. Otherwise, you would just clean it in an acid solution to remove the calcium. This is the diaphragm. This one's in good condition, but we will demonstrate how to remove it. It unscrews off of the shaft. An old one will have cracks. Well, there's kind of a crack right there. You definitely need to be replaced. Remove the spacer. You keep that. Behind that is a shaft seal. This keeps the chlorine solution out of the electrical part of the pump. Rebuild consists of replacing the shaft seal. The spacer. New diaphragm. As long as we're in here, we inspect these inserts where the screws go. There's four. If any of those are pulled outwards, they can't be repaired and the pump will need to be replaced. In the cylinder head, place your new univalves. In the bottom, the arrow always faces up and this points up like an arrow. Bottom one, press in like that. So it sits flat. Replace your tube adapter. Next, put it on the pump. There's a reason I'm doing it in this order. Just watch. Hand tight is good enough on this. Don't use power tools. The sealing surface is the surface the outer surface of the diaphragm. So as long as we're compressing that piece of rubber, we have a good seal. Here's 
Here's the one I dropped. I like to cross tighten these screws like lug nuts on a wheel so you don't get distortion. We'll need to prime the pump which means removing air from inside the pump with liquid. This is my special priming fluid also known as water. Put the top, then put the top tube adapter in. Any discharge hose. If this, over, if this metal ring is rusty, replace it with one from the kit. Otherwise, you have spare parts. The suction hose is next. If your suction hose is white or hard and not clear like this, replace it. Hose is cheap and can save you a lot of problems. Metal ring, connector nut, hand tight like that. Like I say, everything is hand tight. You don't see me using pliers. At the bottom of your suction hose is your foot valve, which is another check valve. Make sure the screen is clean. Remove this part. Replace your univalve. This one's new. Back in your tube adapter. Reattach the screen. This connection is the only one that does not have the metal ring. It's just a hose and a nut. And normally there would be a weight on here too to keep the hose straight inside the barrel. I think you already knew that. You can go to our website, discountwatersupply.com. Go to helpful information. From there go to manuals and instructions. You will see the book for this pump. If you have your book, make sure you read it. That's what your book looks like for your Unidose. And your rebuild kit also comes with instructions. Thank you and have a great day.